cause a lot of unnecessary and preventable uh, injuries. So if we could reduce that adverse drug events, uh, then whatever money we're spending on this uh, would actually pay for itself. Uh, Canadians actually feel that the quality of the system is pretty good. They're concerned about access. And to get access, you've got to do the things that a lot of you are doing here from, from a remote perspective. Uh, one of, the, one of the, the, the tenants of the Canada Health Out is accessibility. Not accessibility for all. It doesn't mean if you live in downtown Toronto, if you live in the, all the, the, main, the mainland of British Columbia. It means if you live in the north, you should be able to get that same level of access. So access is another issue, and can we help solve it? And of course, as, aspects of efficiencies and productivity gains, can we make our clinicians uh, a lot more productive than they are today? And one would hope that if you move away from paper systems to other systems, uh, you should be able to do that. So uh, about 2001, uh, we, we got federal funding. It was, today, it's up to about $2.1 billion. Uh, the first tranche of funding was $500 million. There was no guarantees you were going to get any money after that. The studies that we did showed that if we were to do that end-to-end -end, uh, computerization of, of uh, uh, the health system, we're, we're looking at about $10 billion. Uh, with returns of about six to seven billion on an annual basis, but uh, those were the years of surplus budgets, and we got a, we got a 500 one year, we got 600 million uh, a few years later, followed by you know another 400 million, and, and very recently uh, I got another uh, 500 million. We set up an independent not-for-profit corporation, which is accountable to uh, the provinces, uh, uh, the territories, and the federal government. The dollars are basically put in by the federal government, but we leverage the, the dollars from the federal government to the provinces almost on a dollar-to-dollar -dollar basis. The mission is to foster and accelerate the development and adoption of electronic health information systems with compatible standards. So that's absolutely key. Uh, uh, you know, there was a point in time when you moved down down University Avenue uh, or parts of, of, of Hamilton or whatever, the hospitals actually couldn't even, their systems couldn't speak to each other. So here we're talking about a pan-Canadian system where if you're, you're skiing in Whistler and you're out of Toronto and you break your leg, they'll be able to pull up your medication history, they'll be able to pull up your lab test, etc. Uh, but that's not the issue. The issue is what about at the local level where people seek treatment? And if you can get coherent standards, data standards, messaging standards built into those systems, and you do that consistently across the country, then if you can communicate locally, you should be able to communicate uh, on a pan-Canadian basis. Sure, there's going to take some levels of translation. Uh, one of the things we did, because we didn't have uh, enough money, and even if we did, I'm not sure we would have done that, uh, we built on existing initiatives and we pursued collaborative relationships. Uh, it's, it's, uh, some of you may have heard of the UK experience. Uh, which was uh, somewhat of a bit of a disaster. Uh, they spent billions and billions and billions of pounds. Uh, they really didn't build on existing initiatives. Uh, they, they took perfectly functioning clinical systems and hospitals, they ripped them out, they gave them new systems, the systems didn't have the same level of functionality, uh, they weren't connecting, and, and caused just, just an enormous uh, amount of problems. One of the issues that we have, and I, I tell people this, this is not about technology. This is about people and it's about change. And it's about getting people to change and adopt technology in new ways, in, in usable ways. Uh, and it's, it's, it's tough to do. So uh, one of the things, the first thing we did, and I know there's, there's many members of, of, of uh, Dr. Barber's uh, uh, board here. The board got together and they come up with vision statements and our vision statement, the board came up with, it was a high-quality, sustainable, and effective Canadian healthcare system supported by an infrastructure that provides residents of Canada and the healthcare providers timely, appropriate, and secure access to the right information when and where they enter the healthcare system, and respect for privacy is fundamental uh, to that vision. Of course, there's, there's a huge chasm between a vision and getting the job done, so you get majority kind of uh, uh, uptake and users and adopters. Uh, and so we had to put in some, some uh, business principles. And one of them was, uh, look at, uh, we're really uh, continually s terrified about the fact that we're going to build it and nobody shows up. Uh, and so we became strategic investors, uh, which means uh, for a project, um, we actually uh, look and see if that project has all the ingredients to succeed. Uh, and if it does, and if they have their money, 
we will invest 20%. Uh, we will hold back 30% until they get uh, they implement the hardware and the software, uh, and then we will hold back the 50% until they get adoption, because that's the toughest part. And from where I sit, uh, it's very difficult to get the adoption. Uh, that, that way, when you have uh, uh, debacles like we've had in some of our provinces, and if, if, if many of you are from Ontario, you, you, you know about the whole e-health thing there, uh, certainly this money is protected because no results, no deliverables, uh, basically uh, no funding, no money. Uh, the other thing uh, we do is we, we collaborate very closely uh, with the ministries and through the ministries uh, with their different partners, uh, the hospitals, uh, clinicians, uh, etc. Uh, we collaborate very closely with the private sector. We believe very strongly uh, that, that these systems uh, are not really meat and potatoes for governments to start to build. Uh, they should be built uh, in the private sector, and if they're done that way, then we have an opportunity to replicate them across the country. So we leverage everything from our standards uh, that are leveraged across the country to entire applications. So we got a drug information system built in, in, in Alberta, which we then replicate in Saskatchewan, uh, in, in Quebec, uh, obviously for, with, uh, with change for the language, uh, etc. Uh, we don't do that with, with all of the systems, but we, we do that as, 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 as much as we can. Uh, and we're, we're, we keep a very keen eye out for aspects of privacy. Uh, we bring together privacy commissioners uh, and uh, ministry policy people. Uh, there, are, there are different legislation and laws of privacy across uh, the country. Uh, we help to harmonize uh, those laws. And what we do is, uh, before a system is built, uh, we look at the design, we want to make sure that it is uh, privacy by design. So privacy is actually built into those systems and we do a privacy assessment uh, prior to even giving them that, that 20%. Uh, it's one thing to put a vision together, it's something else now to say, how do you get a coherent record uh, from at least 40,000? When we started there were 40,000 because when we started there was not a lot of these handheld devices. Today, there's millions of handheld devices, right? And so, how do you get a coherent uh, picture which firstly identifies the individual uniquely? Because this one, it's, it's got Caroline Smith. I'm sure there are thousands of Caroline Smith. So how do we know this is the right Caroline Smith? Uh, how do we get this individual's uh, uh, medication history that's pulled from pharmacists, that's pulled from, from uh, hospital uh, pharmacies, from community pharmacies, uh, etc. When it's when it's dis dispensed, is that me? Okay, thank you.